Hi everyone, my name is Miss Connolly. I started making these videos for my fifth grade students and I made them public because I want to make sure we keep as many students learning during this crazy time. So please you make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Let's get the word out there that these videos are available to help students. All right, so today, as you can tell, we're going to talk about quadrilaterals. And all of these shapes have something in common that makes us call them quadrilaterals. Okay, I went over a lot of these attributes that we're going to discuss today in the last video. So we, the last video is about describing shapes and how what attributes we use to describe quadrilaterals. I am going to use those words in this video to help us classify the shapes and name them. So make sure you watch the last video before you come back and continue with this one. Okay, so what makes a quadrilateral a quadrilateral? Well, all quadrilaterals have four sides. Okay, so one, two three, four, four vertices, which is the point at which two lines come together. The single form of that is vertex. One, two, three, four. And they also have four angles, and that's the space inside that we measure when two lines come together. So all quadrilaterals will have four sides, four vertices, and four angles. But we can further classify these shapes. So we're going to get started with parallelograms. So parallelograms, all the shapes here are known as parallelograms. And some of you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, I see something, I call that another name. Well, we're going to talk today about how these shapes can be classified into a couple different categories, and we'll talk about why. All right? So everything you see here is a parallelogram. All right? Why is it a parallelogram? What makes a parallelogram a parallelogram? It must have two pairs of parallel lines. You remember from the last video that when you have a pair of socks, you have two socks that makes one pair, okay? So we're gonna be thinking about two pairs. So um, this shape up here, you see the blue lines, okay? They're opposite from each other. Those are one pair of parallel lines. Those two lines will never meet no matter how far we extend them, okay? The other pair of parallel lines can be seen here in red. If we extend those two lines forever, they will never meet. So all of these shapes have two pairs of parallel lines that will never intersect, okay? So two pairs of parallel lines will make a parallelogram a parallelogram. Also, what do we notice? Opposite sides are equal to each other, okay? So what I mean by opposite sides, we have the side on the left and the side on the right. They are the same exact length. We have the side on the top, and the side and the bottom, they're opposite from each other, and they have the same exact length. You can see that here too. Opposites are equal in size. Opposites are equal in size, okay? So they're equal lengths, and then, of course, they have four sides, four angles, and four vertices, which is what makes them a quadrilateral. So what we have here are parallelograms, but we can also say they're quadrilaterals. So let's take a look at this chart that I'm going to be, um, it's gonna be growing as we continue and learn more names of shapes and how we classify them. So I wanna point out how this works out. When there's the arrow pointing up, that means all or always um, this shape underneath is part of this. So let me explain what I mean. A parallelogram is always a quadrilateral. Okay, or I might say all parallelograms are quadrilaterals. So all the time, anytime you see a parallelogram, it is also called a quadrilateral. And that's, I'm showing that in this diagram with the arrow pointing up, okay? So this parallelogram here is also known as a quadrilateral, but I have a picture of another quadrilateral up here. So what I'm trying to show you is that all parallelograms can be quadrilaterals, but not all quadrilaterals can be parallelograms, only the ones that have two pairs of parallel lines, okay? So this shape here has four sides, four vertices, and four angles, so it's a quadrilateral, but since it doesn't have two pairs of parallel lines, I am not calling it a parallelogram, all right? So time to learn about our next um, classification of shapes, so we have rectangles, all right? So we saw this rectangle on the last slide, which is interesting, um, but you notice that some of the other shapes that were parallelograms are not here anymore. Why? Well, 
To be a rectangle, in order for a rectangle to be a rectangle, these are the attributes that it must have. It has to have two pairs of parallel lines, just like a parallelogram. It has to have opposite sides that are equal, just like a parallelogram. But in order for a rectangle to be a rectangle, it has to have four right angles, okay? And we went over that in the last video. You notice that these, there's four right angles in these shapes. Also, four sides, four angles, and four vertices, which is what makes them a quadrilateral, okay? So let's think about how this fits in with the chart that we were just working on. So, remember I said if we are pointing up, it means all, okay? So, all rectangles are parallelograms, every single one. All rectangles are also quadrilaterals, every single one. Why? Well, a rectangle is a parallelogram because it has two pairs of parallel lines and opposite sides are equal. That's how we classified a parallelogram. So this shape here, this rectangle, is also a parallelogram. It has four sides, four angles, and four vertices, so we can also call it a quadrilateral. So this shape can be classified as a rectangle, a parallelogram, and a quadrilateral. But when we're going down this way, we notice that this parallelogram cannot be called a rectangle because rectangles have to have four right angles. Four, which way do I go? Four right angles. Um, so only the parallelograms that have four right angles are called rectangles. So some parallelograms are rectangles, such as this one, but not all parallelograms are rectangles. So just some. All rectangles are parallelograms. All parallelograms are quadrilaterals. All rectangles are also quadrilaterals. Okay, so time to learn another shape. Squares. Well, some of you might be saying that this one over here has been there for a while. It's been on a couple slides, and it has. What makes a square a square? Um, and I want you thinking about how is this similar to a rectangle? How is it similar to a parallelogram? And how is it similar to how we classify quadrilaterals? All of those things you're gonna see here, and then I want you thinking about what's different that makes a square a square. So we have two pairs of parallel lines. So you can see opposite sides are parallel to each other. We have two pairs of parallel lines. All four sides are equal to each other. One, two, three, four. So that still means that opposite sides are equal, right? This side is equal to this side, but it's also equal to this side and this side. And that is what makes a square a special rectangle. It still has four right angles, and it still has four sides, four angles, and four vertices, but the thing that's classifying a square as a square, and not just, um, and so what's making it different than the other rectangles is that all four sides are equal. Okay, so let's take a look at our growing chart. So remember, all squares are rectangles. All squares are rectangles because all squares have four right angles, all squares have two pairs of parallel lines, and all squares have opposite sides equal, okay? All squares are parallelograms because of the same things, um, because of the two pairs of parallel lines and opposite sides are equal. And all squares are quadrilaterals because um, four sides, four angles, four vertices. But this rectangle here is not considered a square because a square has to have all four sides equal. So only the rectangles that have four equal sides can be, considered, can be considered squares. So we say some rectangles are squares. Which ones? The ones that have four equal sides, okay? All squares though, every single square, all of them are rectangles. A square is a rectangle. I'm gonna say it again. All squares are always rectangles because to be a rectangle, two pairs of parallel lines, four right angles. Opposite sides are equal, which in a square we know is true because all sides are equal. But since 
The square fits all of the requirements to be a rectangle. Opposite sides equal, four right angles, two pairs of parallel lines. Every single square is a rectangle. So a square can be classified as a rectangle. A square can be classified as a parallelogram, and a square can also be classified as a quadrilateral because of the four sides, four angles, and four vertices. Okay, so you're starting to see how the hierarchy of shapes works. A square can be considered a rect is considered a rectangle. A rectangle is always a parallelogram. Parallelogram is always a quadrilateral. All of these are all quadrilaterals. Okay. All right. Another shape that always throws a wrench in our understanding for a minute, a rhombus. Okay, so you see our square friend is here again, and look at this one from the beginning. So what makes a rhombus a rhombus? A rhombus has to have two pairs of parallel lines. So you're probably thinking, that makes it a parallelogram too, and you're right. Then the other thing to make a rhombus special is that all sides are equal. All four sides are equal. It also will have four sides, four angles, and four vertices because it's a quadrilateral. So how does the rhombus fit in with the other shapes? Let's take a look. All right, so rhombus is over here. All right, so we have all squares can be a rhombus. Every single square is a rhombus because it has two pairs of parallel lines and all four sides are equal, okay? You'll notice that the, the arrow is not pointing from rhombus to square. And that's because, and that's because a rhombus does not have four, does not have to have four right angles. If a rhombus does have four right angles, it's considered a square. So some rhombuses are squares, but not all rhombuses, because you see this one here does not have four right angles. It has two pairs of parallel, two pairs of parallel lines, and all four sides are equal. So all squares can be considered a rhombus, every single one, because of the uh, two pairs of parallel lines and that all four sides are equal. All rhombuses are known as also known as parallelograms because they have two pairs of parallel lines. And since all four sides are equal, we obviously know the opposite sides are equal. So that makes it a parallelogram. And obviously all rhombuses are quadrilaterals, okay? So a square, always considered a rhombus. A rhombus, always considered a parallelogram as well. And a, um, a rhombus is also a quadrilateral because of the four sides, four angles, and four vertices. All right, so you probably thought we were done, but there's one more shape that you need to know about, okay? And that is the trapezoid. So the trapezoid is a little bit different than the one side of the chart we just looked at because a trapezoid only has one pair of parallel lines. Now, adults, I know sometimes it's considered that it's at least one pair of parallel lines, but for this video, we're just gonna be using one pair of parallel lines and we'll save the trapezoid debate for another time. Okay, so a trapezoid has one pair of parallel lines, okay? So you see in this green trapezoid here that the top um, side and the bottom side, if I extended those lines on forever, they would be parallel to each other. However, if I extend this line and this one, eventually they would meet, so those lines are not parallel. And that's what we're calling one pair of parallel lines. So here and here are parallel, and this one, we have the one pair here and here, and then over here, we have the parallel lines here and here. So one pair of parallel lines. It also will always have four sides, four angles, and four vertices, which make it a quadrilateral. So where does this fit in in our chart? It fits in way away from the parallelograms, okay? So all trapezoids, every single one, all of them, remember always, all, always, always, all trapezoids will always be called quadrilaterals because they have four sides, four angles, and four vertices, okay? Only some quadrilaterals will be trapezoids because only some quadrilaterals have one and only one pair of parallel lines.
okay? So remember, when you are using this chart as a reference, and I highly recommend taking a screenshot, take a picture with your phone, make your own in your notebook, do something so you can remember this. Remember when the arrow is pointing up, that means all and always. And I hope that this video brought you some understanding why, okay? When, um, if a shape has the same attributes as the shape above it, it can be considered that shape as well, okay? So here's some review because the square is really important. A square is a shape that has two pairs of parallel lines, four right angles, and all four sides are equal. A square is always a rectangle because rectangles have two pairs of parallel lines, four right angles, and opposite sides are equal. So the square fits that category because obviously opposite sides are equal in a square if all four sides are equal. So a rectangle has opposite sides equal. Rectangles are always parallelograms because to be a parallelogram, you have to have two pairs of parallel lines and opposite sides that are equal. All of these shapes are always quadrilaterals because they have four sides, four angles, and four vertices, okay? Now, a square is always a rhombus because a rhombus has two pairs of parallel lines and um, four sides that are equal. A rhombus is always a parallelogram because a rhombus has two pairs of parallel lines and obviously opposite sides are equal and they're always quadrilaterals. When we're going down the chart, it's a little bit different because some parallelograms can be rectangles and it's only because they have four right angles. So if you have a parallelogram, that looks like this and it has four right angles, it can also be considered a rectangle, okay? Some rectangles are squares because if a square, if a rectangle has four sides that are all equal, that's when we can consider it a square, okay? So I know this is our first exposure to this, but we will keep on thinking about it. If you're in my class, we'll be talking about it, um, but I have some stuff for you to try. So I want you to use the chart. I hope that you've already written it down, but I took a small picture of it here. What I want you to think about is filling in these blanks. So it says, use these words to complete the blanks. Some, all, or no. Okay, and I'll do the first example for you. Blank rectangles are parallelograms. So I ask myself, is it some rectangles that are parallelograms, all rectangles that are parallelograms, or um, no rectangles are parallelograms. So I'm going to look at my chart and I'm going to think about what makes a rectangle a rectangle, what it makes a parallelogram a parallelogram, and I'm going to say all rectangles are parallelograms. So I would write the word all here, okay? And the rest are for you to do. Blank parallelograms are trapezoids. Blank squares are rectangles. Blank rectangles are squares. And blank rhombuses or squares. So you're gonna think about if some of those shapes can be considered the other shapes, if all of them will always be classified as the other shape, or if none of them will be classified as the other shape. All right, so I hope you enjoyed. I know it's a lot of information, but you can do it. Bye.